Alright, today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to change fuel injectors on any white block or P2 Volvo. The only exception is for an R model, but don't panic. It's a very simple change. There's just an additional cover right here. I currently have 650cc injectors already in, and I'm going to 1000. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys how to do this. Before we do any work, we're going to remove the negative battery cable. On your car, it will be a 10 millimeter bolt. Then we're going to disconnect the fuel pressure sensor on the fuel rail. It'll be this clip held on with a little extra clip on the fuel pressure sensor itself. You may have to use a, a flathead screwdriver to pry it off. Do not pull it by the wires. It will damage it. So now we're going to take off the little uh, cap that's on the fuel rail pressure release, uh, which we'll get to later. Store the cap in that little groove to not lose it. And uh, now we're going to remove the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold in the fuel rail itself. All right, once you've removed the two 10 milliliters holding in the fuel rail, we're going to remove the two T30s holding on the plastic cover. Uh, on my car, I am a bit lucky because I'm using the IPD boost charge pipe, so I have a bit of wiggle room when it comes to the second bolt. On your car, if it's stock, it'll most likely have a plastic or magnesium charge pipe, and you'll have to remove it. Uh, I'll show you in a few seconds here where your bolts will be and where you'll need to disconnect it at. So you'll see on my car, uh, it's right under the charge pipe, but luckily mine's silicone and I can move it. I'm pointing to where yours will most likely be mounted and you can disconnect it down there by the intercooler and over by the turbo charger. Getting the plastic cover out shouldn't be very hard, especially if you've removed your charge pipe. I'm being lazy and keeping mine on. All right, now for the dirty work. Get yourself a rag, don't use a glove like me. Get a little flat head or something that will fit in here and press that little pressure release valve. Some fuel will most likely squirt out, but it's better from this than when you release the return fuel line and have it spray all over your engine. It's better to absorb it with a rag and release it there first. Sometimes nothing will even come out. Due to my injectors being larger than stock, my harness runs upside down compared to a regular stock injector setup. Uh, yours will most likely be facing up, but mine is facing down. You're going to take a T15 or T10 socket and remove this fuel line clip. The only way to remove the fuel line is by removing this clip. Once you loosen the bolt, there will be a little latch you pull out on and up on. That's how you release this little clip to remove the fuel on. I highly recommend you put a rag under that area because when you go to remove it, a lot of fuel that have been sitting in the fuel rail will come out. Uh, you'll see when I remove it that I did not do that and I paid the consequences. So it may seem kind of brutal and strange, but the way you're going to remove this fuel line is just by pulling it. As you can see, I didn't put a rag and I just had fuel leaking all over my engine. And then I go and run and find a rag. So put that there first. Once your fuel line and all your electrical connectors are removed, you're free to remove the fuel rail. I recommend if this is your first time removing it, it's probably going to be a little bit stuck put each hand on each side of the rail even pressure and pull it will most likely pop out right because I was lazy and left my charge pipe in it makes it a little more difficult for me to remove my fuel rail so I'm disconnecting the fuel injector electrical connectors and then uh, maneuvering the fuel rail around the pipe and as a caution I'd recommend avoiding holding it upside down because fuel will leak out as you'll see the face of a man who leaks fuel all over his engine
All right. Once you got the fuel rail out, there will be three Torx sockets. They, I believe they are T25. Uh, you want to completely remove all three. And if you have piggybacks like me, you will need to remove them in order for this metal slide to come out. So you're about to witness me brute force an injector out, which is not how you should do it. Because this will happen when you do it. The O-ring will get stuck in the fuel row. It's not a big deal. You can just pull it out and pop it right back on the injector. But to avoid this, you're going to go slow, twist back and forth, and pull it gently. You can start to feel when you're being too aggressive. Just take your time and pull them out gently. Alright, now to the fun stuff. We're installing our new injectors. When you're installing injectors or anything with an O-ring, you want to lube it up. I like to use just a little bit of fresh motor oil. You literally just need the amount that's on the cap. I rub my finger with it. Just douse the O-rings the little areas where it's going to go into and it makes the whole install much better and when you go to pull them out hopefully they're not super duper stuck so when you go to install these you do want to be gentle you'll feel them plop right in you want to avoid any metal on metal contact once these bad boys are installed there's a slit near the fuel wheel you need to make sure all of them are lined up the only way that this uh, little metal slide is going to go back on if they're all equal, including this plastic one for the fuel return. Uh, as you see, my injector is upside down. And if you're going to do that too, you need to turn that one sideways like me. Or else it's going to come into contact with the intake manifold. Install these torque bolts back onto the slide. And then start to install your fuel reel back how you took it out. Uh, plug them back in before you start to install everything or else it will be very difficult to reach. Now we're going to get that little cap that we stored earlier and put it back onto the pressure relief valve. On the R models these will be blue just like the engine plastics. Alright now with your fuel line reinstalled and your fuel injectors in the appropriate areas you're going to want to put these two 10 millimeter bolts back into the rail don't tighten them down all the way yet you want to make sure everything's lined up and in place before we tighten them down how i like to do it is once everything's in the place i hold the fuel rail down making sure none of the o-rings are pinched or squeezed and then i tighten these two 10 millimeter bolts all right, wrapping up the install, we're going to put our little clip back on the fuel line, tightening our little Torx bolt. After doing that, we're going to want to make sure to plug in our fuel pressure sensor, uh, and there's a little clip to support the cord there. Now, let's listen to some awesome clips of these 1000cc injectors going to work on this beautiful Volvo S60 T5.